This is Mike with CSTactical.com. Here I hold a Smitten Bender 3 to 20 that they sent us to do a review on. It is mounted to a 260 AR-10 that we got from Gap. Uh, this uh, system shot really, really well. I like the, the overall of the scope. It was fast, quick target acquisition, um, back on target pretty quick. Cool. I had a, quite a bit of complaints about the reticle though. Uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. The, this is again the 3 to 20, so you have a nice field of range, range of uh, magnification. It's a little bit even shorter than the 4 to 16 Smitten Bender that's already currently out there. We're not going to really do any talk about the tracking of this scope or how the glass really compares to anything out there. We know Smitten Bender holds high standards in all those aspects, so that's not going to be really about the review. This is going to be more about the functionality of the scope, what I saw, what I liked about it. So locking turrets on this particular one. I felt were a little stiff. You had to push down on them to lock them in place. And when you are in position and you did get a beat on something and you realize that you needed to make an adjustment and you have it locked, you gotta almost get out of position at some times. It feels a little too tight to pull it out. So it can break your position, but the clicks are on it are positive too. Nice and positive. It has the MTC double turn on this one. Locking windage, locking elevation. Sight parallax, really nice clean parallax. The illumination is where it's normally at. What sets this stuff apart is that you got a 50 millimeter lens and you got a 50 millimeter back eyepiece. This whole scope did a really well, well well job for me. I felt like this would be a great for an AR-10 platform or even just a, a gas a, a bolt gun. This scope has a 34 millimeter tube. Um, it has everything basically that we find from the, the normal SNBs and it just made it a little bit more compact, tight package with a nice range of uh, options here. Going to the reticle, they sent me the Horus H58. Um, had, a, had a little bit of issues being able to track hits on that, especially when I was getting it zeroed. Uh, the reticle was covering up quite a bit of the, the target, so I had to move the reticle around so I could find a spot to be able to see where, where I was uh, hitting so I could make my adjustments. Um, the other thing about the reticle, that top end magnification, the line, the main crosshair lines are really thick, covering up a good amount of the target. So when you're trying to shoot for small MOI sized targets, just be aware that you're going to be covering up a good portion of it. If you're shooting basically an 18 by 18 size target, you're not going to have an issue with it for tar fast target acquisition. Um, me personally would not choose the H58 for uh, this particular scope. I would go with the Klein or the uh, MSR or one of those other reticles that they have out there or even the P4 fine. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be choosing out down there in the range when I'm going to be getting one of these myself and we'll be running it for a while. But uh, it's a nice scope. What we kind of, like I said, what we expect from Smith & Bender. The whole scope ran real well, uh, tracked real well, but, uh, but overall the scope is basically what we would expect from Smith & Bender. Um, if you have any more questions, feel free to go to CS Tactical and ask them there.